Be your own fiduciary. In this episode, I'm going to address the question, what does it mean to be a fiduciary? Being a member of the financial services industry for 47 years, I'm going to explain a little pet peeve that I have. So stay with me and you'll understand why you should be your own fiduciary. I'm Doug Andrew. I've been a financial strategist and retirement planning specialist for 47 years. I've written several books. And when this topic comes up about, are you a fiduciary? I always just sort of snicker and I think, oh dear, they've been indoctrinated. Now, let's first of all define what that means. When you are a fiduciary or you have the fiduciary standard or rule, that simply means that uh, when you help people with their money, uh, for retirement and uh, you're putting yourself out as a fiduciary, you are going to put the client's interest first. You're going to put their wife and kids first, not your wife and kids. You're out to do the best thing for them. You're taking the advice that you would give your own parents. Uh, it's about them. It's not about you trying to make a commission. So that sounds great, doesn't it? Many times people will ask, are you a, a fiduciary? I go, oh, I always put my clients uh, best interest first, but let me tell you the danger in just letting somebody else be a fiduciary under that definition, because I think it's better if you are your own fiduciary, because you'll look out for your best interest the best. Let's go back to some of the critical periods in American history, a lot of fiduciaries who said that they were putting their clients' best interest first, put their clients' money into the market, and they did not really listen close to the concerns that their clients had. So it was in market volatility, and all of a sudden people lost 20, 30, 40% in the value of their IRAs or 401ks in the market. That happened from 2001 to 2003. Then it happened again in 2008. And a lot of people were really frustrated. I thought he was a fiduciary. I thought she was looking out for my best interest. Well, somehow people maybe did not understand that their money in the market is going to go through the ups and downs. Some of the advisors say, oh, I am just, just hang in there. But they get away with just letting people lose money in the market thinking, well, I'm a fiduciary. Let's go to taxes. Many times you can tell by looking at their situation, they're going to accumulate quite a bit of money for their retirement or their success or their company. You can tell uh, 20 and 30 years in advance, they're not going to be in a lower tax bracket when they retire. And you can't believe how many fiduciaries I've seen that advise their clients to put their money into tax deferred accounts, IRAs, 401ks, pension plans, and so forth. Oh, you want to defer, you'll be in a lower bracket when you retire. Well, if they knew that their client was not going to be in a lower bracket. Was that looking out for their best interest? No. Why would you do that? I would uh, pay the tax in the lower rates when they're contributing the money and make sure when they retired, it would come out tax-free. But do they get sued or blamed? No. Oh, I was looking out for their best interest. This one really drives me crazy because so many advisors know their clients are not going to be in a lower tax bracket and they continue to tell them to defer, defer, defer and take out RMDs, required minimum distributions, postpone the tax, thinking they're looking out for their best interest. No, they're not. If I actually calculated how much unnecessary tax many people pay and they went back to their fiduciary and said, why? That was not looking out for my best interest by telling me to continue to postpone and defer. They would think twice, but I want to share with you, there's a hidden agenda behind this whole fiduciary rule, and it's going to blow you away. In my 47 years as a uh, retirement planning specialist, I've noticed that there are occasionally articles uh, like Time Magazine, why it's time to retire the 401k and do something better instead. I think that was around 2007 and 8. Also, the Wall Street Journal did an article on why the original champions of the 401k lament the day they ever came up with that idea. Why? 
Well, it's because a lot of people were taking their, their money and putting it in the market and they saw it lose 40% twice in the decade from 2000 to 2010, even to 2012. Or they were putting it in and they weren't in lower tax brackets. So is that really looking out for their best interest? But here's my biggest concern. The Department of Labor was really pushing under the Obama administration, and this will come back, that's why I'm telling you about it. We're going to require that any financial advisor abide by the fiduciary rule. Now that sounds so good, everybody goes, yeah, we'll vote for that, we'll vote for that. What was the hidden agenda? See, Richard uh, Cordray, who was the first uh, director, or he was the, the chief guy with the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, he actually said, oh, we don't have a debt problem in America. That's when the United States debt was approaching 20 trillion. Do you know why? He said at the time, because we have 23 trillion in people's uh, yet to be taxed IRAs and 401ks. So don't worry about the debt. Now it's about 30 trillion in IRAs or 401ks. Here's the big danger. The government knows that when you retire in a traditional account, you're gonna have to take out the money under their life expectancy formula. That's gonna trigger tax. They're planning on covering a lot of their uh, overspending with taxes on people's IRAs and 401ks. But that's not what I'm getting at. Here's where my concern is. They were proposing, the DOL, was proposing a fiduciary rule on advisors who managed people's IRAs and 401ks and retirement funds. And what they wanted to do is say, you must be a fiduciary and we as the government will decide what's in the public's best interest. Guess what was under up their sleeve, okay? <laughs> we think because of the market crash. They were actually waiting for the next market crash to come out with this and get it approved like that. See, your money in the market is, is, is dangerous that you lose money. So a fiduciary must diversify at least 30% of all your IRA 401k money into U.S. Treasuries. Think about that. What do U.S. Treasuries pay? A measly one, two, three percent. This is what the government came up with as a hidden agenda. We will decide what is in the public's best interest by requiring a licensed fiduciary to diversify people's IRAs or 401ks into these measly low yielding U.S. treasuries. What's a U.S. treasury? You're loaning the government the money. They knew they could get this as a mandate and borrow the public's money to cover their debt by forcing people to buy U.S. treasuries if their fiduciary was required to do it. Now, fortunately, when the uh, Trump administration came in, they tabled that, but I think it's coming back. Beware of hidden agendas. I always teach my students, my mentees, uh, my clients, who looks out for your best interest better than you? That's why I recommend people educate themselves and make their own choices rather than relying on somebody else who has to abide by mandates that are government controlled. So if this is making sense, I would recommend you read one of my books. Uh, my most recent one is The Laser Fund. You learn where to put your money for liquidity, safety, and predictable rates of return, and you'll be looking out for your best interest and you won't have to kowtow or comply to the regulators forcing you to have inferior investments that you know better because you can't be rowing upstream in a U.S. Treasury at one or two or three miles an hour of interest when the current of inflation we all know is going to be coming down at five, six, and seven. You'll be going backwards.